Oh, protection of children. Uh, okay, during the the trial period. Okay. All right. I don't know where we would put this in. Reconciliation of the criminal. Uh, no. We'll find some place to put it. Possib okay, uh, we have, uh, yes, uh, Eurochip. Microphone, please. Sorry, I'd like to add in, in terms of the visitations, that they should be child-friendly, please. Um, and also, when we, the list you gave us just before lunch included regional in initiatives and a legislative framework discussion. I, I imagine that's how we would implement it, but I don't know if you're going to come to them or if we've, we've lost those. Put uh, the research at the national, regional, and global levels, or maybe uh, research and... Uh, or and, and initiatives, and I initiatives, think, because okay. I think that could include the networks okay. and other pilot projects and so on. All right, yes. We have uh, the two ladies, Please. Um, on reintegration, I would just uh, prefer if we spelled out a little bit more what we meant with reintegration process. And I think what we meant is that having contact to children, uh, children having contact with their parents, are, is important for the rehabilitation and resocialization. Um, of uh, parents in detention. Um, I think the methodology we meant not only for statistics but for in terms of guidelines for the actual assessment of whether a child should be detained with their parent or not. Um, and the uh, identification of uh, dependent children um, right from the arrest of the parent I, I also don't see on that list. And I was wondering whether we could capture that we mean all places of detention, not just prisons. Thank you. Yeah. We can call, uh, create another bullet point, identification at all uh, detention, uh, detention settings. Perhaps that's what you're saying, identification of uh, could you repeat that very quickly, please? I had, th those were two points, the identification, whether there are any children once you arrest a parent. Um, and the other point was that our standards recommendations are not just for prisons in the sense of criminal justice institutions, but for all places of detention. Okay. For all, yes. Places of detention. Yes, thank you, Severin. You're so quick. Thank you, uh, Rena. And then I have Julia, and I have a lady in the back. Rena, please. Uh, uh, I want to just address the point about uh, training for prison officials institutionalized. Uh, first of all, the last port of call for the children and for anybody imprisoned is. Uh, the, pres the prison environment. So what I think we were really discussing was um, not just uh, clinical training or institutionalized training, but uh, more information and training for uh, the arresting agency, the sentencing, in other words, police, pr uh, judiciary, and prisons. Uh, so I'm not sure whether training is covering everything. It's being informed uh, as well. Uh, a, a policeman arresting does not know, you know, whether the family has kids, nor does the judge. And finally, as I said, last port of call is the prison. So we're talking of uh, more information that should be available about children at each juncture. We have the right to information, or that's from the child's point. But I'm afraid we're going to have to make uh, final calls. I have Leda, I have uh, Julia, and I have the two ladies on this end, uh, maybe three, and that's uh, 30 seconds each, please. Leda first. 
Sorry, just to clarify, my, my first suggestion was twofold. My, my main suggestion is that justice reform should come first on the list because if we can, if we can create a culture whereby best interest of the child is taken into consideration, we have a legal basis to request for all the rest. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Julia? The point that relates to below that, reconciliation of criminal justice legislation and protection of children legislation. That discussion didn't talk really about juvenile justice legislation, but about other criminal justice legislation that is inconsistent with protection. Thank you. And yes, the lady behind. Uh, there shouldn't be discrimination against foreign women, migrant women, because it could be detrimental to the growth of the child. Because in Italy, for example, we have the automatic exclusion at the end of the sentence. There's no consideration given to the the growth for the child, the, the child's upbringing. Okay. The, foreign, the nationality and civil rights is what we have uh, included here. I have uh, lady at the very back and then lady on the corner, and that's it. Oh, hello. Um, I would argue that what needs to be at the top of the list is actually that there is, um, wherever possible, effort made to include children in the decision-making process, in the decisions that are made, for example, around the alternative care for them, if their mother, for example, is taken into custody, and certainly around the nature of visits to the parent in prison. Okay, and one final. Yes, madam. Thank you. Just um, a suggestion with regards to visitation to make sure that there's um, a point around the obligation or responsibility for government to actually facilitate or support visits of children to their mothers if those mothers have been imprisoned in a different city um, or a location that's harder to access for those children. Area of visitation. And I am afraid this is the, all the time we have. Uh, thank you very much for the vibrant discussions and the uh, comments. Uh, we've learned a lot. I know today has not been enough for us to cover all the issues and areas, but I'm sure this is a start of discussion around the group of children that are forgotten uh, internationally, globally, nationally, and regionally, and locally, for that matter. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will go into swift transition. I don't think there is any time for a, uh, a, bl a break, per se. Uh, we will immediately resume, and uh, our chairperson is uh, standing by to come uh, back to the podium. Thank you very much.
Merci beaucoup, mesdames et messieurs. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for going back to your seats and uh, uh, quietening down so we can allow the last activity for today's uh, working uh, day to uh, uh, be concluded successfully. I would like to say that we'd like to give the floor to the two operators, first of all, of the working group, starting with group number one. Each group will have 10 minutes to present their conclusions and recommendations. Please sit down, please. Please, please take your seats. Thank you for listening to the reports of the working group. Working groups, our rapporteurs will have to uh, be quite uh, speedy in presenting not the final recommendations and conclusions, but at least uh, uh, two sets of recommendations. Each group has 10 minutes, and it's a pleasure for me to give the floor for group one to our colleague, uh, Ms. Hadil Alasmar. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, honorable uh, colleagues. Uh, good evening, everyone. Our discussion was very enriching, and we have learned good lessons from the presentation and the intervention from every one of you. This will help us a lot to take a good discussion and dialogue when we have state parties in this regard. We learned from your experience and best practices from many, many countries all over the world. And we agreed together in this recommendation. Number one, non-custodial measures as a priority alternative community-based initiative, including pre-trial and under-trial sentencing legislative framework that include conditional conventions. Identification, whether there are any children when parents are arrested, efforts made to include the children in decisions made. We will work on uh, limiting the, the age when child based with his parents in, in, uh, in, uh, in prisons or in such detention centers. Disabled children will be well regarded and we will take good care regarding them and their needs. Statutory responsibility who would be responsible to oversee these children and coordination between different ministries involve justice reforms. Because, uh, I, I can't see. Please, if you can just, uh, uh, what's her name? Please just, very. Reconciliation between the state interest, best interest of the child and main caregiver's interest will be taken care. Justice for women in a place of detention Legal, we will ask for legal consultation and the relation with social workers. Uh, we, we also agreed uh, according to issues uh, around visi uh, visitation. Uh, we agreed that we should keep a good contact between the child and the parents while they are in the prison. <laughs> it's too big. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> Pregnant and lacking women, pre-postal natal care also will be uh, well cared from us when we are speaking regarding women who, who is a pregnant and or get pregnant uh, through the, the detention time. Training for all officials involved, uh, institutionalized and continuous and access to information in general.
reconciliation of criminal justice and the protection of the children, methodology for clear statics, because we found that there is no data um, uh, we can uh, build on, uh, not only in, in one region. Uh, this is uh, uh, actually something very, very obvious um, all over uh, the regions, almost. Uh, fight against social stigma, and uh, we will also uh, um, always uh, urge the media and encourage the media so to be sensitizing this issue and to speak um, to, to the public uh, for not system, uh, stigmatizing children in, in uh, prison with their parents. Uh, the child has the right to information. Uh, because they usually uh, be lied when they ask about their parent and uh, if they are, uh, will, how much they will stay at detention centers, uh, if they will come back or not. Reintegration process, it will be also taking good care because the children should uh, stay in touch with their parent and uh, and uh, before the mother or the father will go out of the prison they should uh, see each other for more time uh, this is uh, maybe will break the ice between both of them and the child will get used once again to his parent lack of research was also something we said that uh, we have uh, a lack in research and initiatives at the national region and the global levels will be, should be covered and should be well known for everybody. So, uh, so also we will pay good efforts in this regard. Uh, the possibility to, to work and make money, maybe this is a few cases in, in case of uh, that uh, there is no uh, enough budget allocation for any kind of uh, prisons when, when we are speaking about countries who is, uh, there is a limit uh, uh, budget allocation in, uh, and uh, there is no uh, very clear ministry who is taking care regarding this issue. Issues about birth registration, actually this is also something very, uh, very uh, important because the children, they will be very stigmatized when they have birth registration from uh, the prison. In case of uh, mothers who have uh, a very long uh, detention time and they are foreigners, sometimes um, uh, the right of a child to hold the nationality of the country and to have the civil rights, maybe it will be problematic for few countries. So it also will be one of the topics we will take care about. Uh, also, we have a recommendation that uh, uh, we should also urge and encourage uh, state parties to implement Bangkok rules uh, f because they have a very good norms and the standards. Um, uh, we should we shall take a good care um, in um, regarding the services which will be um, affording for a child in uh, in detention especially when we are speaking about health education food playgrounds next please finish okay and that's it. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry, but it was really very difficult to, to read from here. It was very small, the line. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, madame. Thank you very much, Ms. Asma, for presenting, obviously, in summary fashion and very briefly, in a somewhat uh, uh, sketchy way, the initial recommendations provided by Group 1. Obviously, all of these recommendations and discussions will be taken up by the committee as a basis for more detailed recommendations that will unfortunately be adopted next January. We are awaiting Ms. Herzog, who is just coming up. She is here to present the results of Working Group 2. I take advantage of this little uh, uh, interval to say that as of next Monday, the website of our general day of general discussions, the
the CIC website will have been updated, including a link to the video that is currently uh, being made for this general day of discussion, and also uh, so as to make available the PowerPoint presentations uh, from today. So you will have uh, all of this on the website. In the um, particular page reserved to our general day of discussion, I would also ask you, if you've not already done so, to uh, put your names on the lists that circulated in the two groups, participation uh, lists, lists of participants. So we will have a complete list of all the people present at the working groups. Mrs. Herzog is ready. Ms. Herzog, I give you the floor to report on group two. You have 10 minutes, not more. Thank you. So we've had the working group, uh, second working group of ch children left outside when the pa parent is incarcerated. And in the first half of the day, we were focusing on child-focused approach, positive elements, looking for solutions, limited to parents who are, were, or are imprisoned by the criminal justice system, and exploring the range of support that they can be provided for children. Three key areas have been covered, before, during and after imprisonment, before arrest, pre-trial, pre period, court trial, sentencing, then the support provided to children during the process um, and during the uh, imprisonment uh, time and the after trial uh, imprisonment and leaving the um, prison system. Um, the next uh, um, area where we, we had a, a very, very fruitful discussion was the dignity of the child, non-discrimination and the best interest of the child. Obviously, we were looking at the degree of stigmatization of the child, which is based on the type of the parent's offense, and this was an interesting approach that we were not only looking at the overall stigmatization of children, but also how are the children handled depending on the offense their parents committed, because it can differ um, and it can very severely affect children. Then we were also looking at the base, best interest um, assessment on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, taking into consideration the views of the child. And this is very important because, as we could hear from the colleagues all over the world, uh, the overgeneralization in these cases is very dangerous because there is a kind of protocol, fits, uh, one fits all, and that doesn't meet the needs of the children and the different situations occurring. Then the, uh, in, um, under this umbrella, a special provision for indigenous children, minority children, foreign nationals, children left behind in other jurisdictions. These are different subgroups of children who have very different needs and also obviously the situation they are um, uh, sometimes trapped are also very uh, specific, uh, not mentioning children who are living with disability, but it was coming uh, later. Um, obviously, um, we were looking at the right to visit a parent in, in the prison system and maintaining the contact between child and parent, and we explored the different angles of this uh, issue. Um, many, many circumstances like the maintenance of the prison system, the readiness to accept children, friendly environment where parents and children can uh, meet, also the physical contacts and its barriers in many um, instances. Um, one, of the, one of the examples uh, being when um, infants are brought to the prison system, but there is a danger of smuggling in drugs or weapons or knives, and therefore um, these are very controversial issues that on the one hand we would like to uh, help the, the close con uh, physical contact, on the other hand we have to be careful and ensure that no one is hurt or the prison system's um, rules are not um, broken. Um, another issue what we were looking at was um, children committing crime together with their parents or forced by parents and then their contact with the parent, which is a very specific issue. Again, children having uh, special needs and also the 
um, the risk or, or, or I mean the need to, to somehow uh, also have them to cope with their anger or uh, other consequences or other, other consequences. The good practice identified for arrest procedures. Um, some countries um, were um, telling their systems where the police forces are going together with social workers like in, uh, in Norway, for instance, where uh, the police is uh, going to arrest the parent together with a social worker who is specially trained and that is very um, helpful. Uh, the humiliation of the parent in front of the child, which is quite a frequent um, uh, uh, case, should be avoided. Uh, and there are different techniques that could be used, um, uh, placing children into another room or uh, separating um, um, the child in other ways. Uh, children in, of incarcerated parents seen as a juvenile justice case, which was the case of India, where children are also judged by the juvenile justice uh, system even if the parent was committing the offence and the child is totally innocent. The parental custody rights are very often taken away automatically once the, the parent is um, uh, arrested or imprisoned and this shouldn't be the case so this is an I I important issue to be looked at. Um, a huge uh, area of interest and obviously from the, the committees and the conventions point of view um, uh, very important, the, the, the child rights to be heard and the right to information. Uh, child participation in the development of the protocols and guidelines for the judiciary and for the police. Because children, just like the parents, uh, the offense, the, or the parents who are, who are in prison and the parents who are not, can be of help when uh, the protocols and uh, procedures are designed because they know best um, what are their needs and how can they be helped. Providing information for children of incarcerated parents regardless of whether the child was present at the time of the arrest or not. In many instances it is very traumatic if the child is present when the arrest is happening but also it can be very traumatic if the parent, if the child is not present and there is a secrecy or they are trying to hide the fact and there is no information provided. However, the information provided for the children must, must be child friendly and we have to take into consideration the different cultural and language issues and formats in this respect. Also, the information, child friendly information should be available through the services outside the prison system for children and obviously for the other family members. Um, access to information about the parent, especially uh, it, it is a very special case if the parent is on the death row or are, uh, to prepare the child for the, for the death penalty, including the last visit, um, right to proper burial and access to the body of the parent who was sentenced to death, because it's often not happening. Age-appropriate intervention, we were looking at the different age differences when children have very different needs depending on their age. Institutions and decision-making, was the um, next uh, area. Um, protocols are needed for the police, for the parents, um, for, for the, as I mentioned earlier, for these actions, the act, action ta uh, taken. Um, we've heard that family counseling has got positive effect or can have positive effect if made properly. There are a lot of um, good practices present. We have to learn more about and it should be publicized. There is a, um, as in all areas of, of uh, children's issues, there is a lack of data and research on children of um, incarcerated parents and there would be a, a need for uh, longitudinal studies and also peer-to-peer -peer research so ch uh, children's involvement and all those affected should be involved in this kind of research. The need for community research also because community uh, specific act, there are a lot of community spe uh, specific areas that should be covered. And um, obviously another big area uh, is the training of everybody practically. So training of all those working with children, all the helping professionals with special attention paid on teachers who should be um, taught how to handle these cases and also 
um, those uh, the police forces, uh, judges, prosecutors, and uh, social workers has uh, professionals who are meeting children, how to um, communicate with them and how to help them um, in the different um, situations uh, they are at. Now, this was only the first part of our um, meeting, and the afternoon meeting we had. Um, uh, I tried to make a very quick um, overview of that in two minutes, if I find my other bun. Oh, excellent. Then I... Thank you. Uh, so we, we haven't got it because I haven't got the time to put it into the PowerPoint, so I will very quickly just give you an overview on that. <clears throat> A common minimum, kind of set of common minimum standards concerning all relevant issues should be <clears throat> uh, designed, and this was one of the messages we've got. The best interest assessment case by case, because it's not so obvious, although at the first sight it could uh, seem to be, that we should use all the other human rights mechanisms to ensure the rights of the child and the best interest of the child. <clears throat> and there were some very... Um, important questions concerning whether the placement of the incarcerated uh, pers uh, parent into a prison to a remote area or to a long distance from the child is a punishment for the parent, is a punishment for the child or the, the rest of the family, or it's just because it is um, a kind of given uh, <clears throat> situation in a country that this, these are the realities and they have no other option uh, to place uh, closer the parent. Now, in these cases, the, the issue what was raised um, by the group was also what kind of financial and practical aid is provided to the family and to the child to enable the visits and the regular contacts. Another area of um, um, interest was the uh, non-personal contact, which is not replacing personal contact with the parent, but in many instances, telephone, video conferencing, Skype, and other opportunities are also relevant and important if there is no chance to meet personally um, the parent. In uh, close uh, relation to this, um, the distance um, concerning the cross-border issues was also raised, that uh, there are instances when the parent and the child is not in the same country and there is no way to cross the border and then communication has to be somehow resolved. Uh, the financial aid provided to the families was also um, raised as an issue that there are a lot of lot of uh, costs related to the uh, prison um, imprisonment of the of a family member, partly because they are in need for um, some um, uh, money um, while they are in the prison system, but also the family very often lacks the breadwinner's income who is uh, incarcerated, and also there are many, many other additional costs, not mentioning the fact that when the parents are leaving the, the, the uh, prison system, there are sometimes too high expectations on all sides. And um, uh, then a lot of uh, additional financial uh, resources are needed, partly for the recovery, rehabilitation of the person who is leaving the prison system, mental health issues, um, um, and, and other questions of mentioning unemployment um, and homelessness, which are also very um, uh, frequently happening, but also the, the other family members who are without any kind of um, uh, financial resources, they are not eligible for certain um, services or allowances um, due to the, um, the um, situation. Um, an important uh, element of our debate was the, the role of the media, positive and negative sense, and then I will stop here. <laughs> Thank you. And everybody was very active and happy, and I guess we had a very, very constructive and very good discussion, and thank you for everybody who participated in the group and the preparation and everything. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Maria. I'm sorry for cutting you off in mid-flow. We are in the final stretch, and we still have our dear friend Yang Yi, who will be 
making conclusions of the conclusion, so she has the last word. She is our main rapporteur for the day, Yang Yi. Thank you very much, uh, Jean and uh, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, all, all the distinguished uh, delegations here from different organizations and colleagues, dear friends. Uh, today was not long enough, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, and I would like to, from the outset, thank all our partners, especially um, Rachel, who was so very persistent in pushing this uh, theme for the Day of General Discussion. Uh, this theme has been with us for many years, but we've never had the chance to really look into this. I consider this the group of children who have uh, parents uh, who are living in prison or incarcerated. Uh, I consider these group of children as the forgotten children. They have slipped out of anybody's radar. They're not in any statistics, and we find that from the two working groups that uh, there is lack of research, there is lack of data, uh, and there is lack of methodology uh, to study the nature and the scope of the situation. Uh, the, the mere knowledge of the rate of children, the number of children who have uh, parents who are incarcerated is not definitive. We have many reasons to uh, conclude that uh, non-custodial sentencing should be a pri priority rather than custodial sentencing, and uh, alternative forms of sentencing must be a priority uh, when we are dealing with uh, uh, offenders with children. Uh, there is a new uh, rule in the uh, UN adopted in, in the uh, area of administration of justice. It just came out last uh, December. Is the new uh, Bangkok rules uh, for the uh, treatment of women prisoners and non-custodial measures for women offenders. We may wish to uh, look into this into more detail to look into the issues of children. I think that what we can conclude from to, uh, today's day of discussion is the need for the reconciliation of the interest of the state and the best interest of the child. Uh, oftentimes, the interest of the state is always, and the interest of the security is always, uh, t t takes the uh, priority seat, but I think our group, uh, both groups will agree that it should be the best interest of the child. Uh, and I think we are running out of time because I see my chairperson is reshuffling his papers. And I would like to immensely thank all the organizers and the supporters from my NGO groups. And I'd like to thank Severin from our working group one who was, who was uh, drafted at the last minute to assist us with the uh, recommendations. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Madame Lee. Thank you very much, Ms. Lee. It's also my pleasure to say again, and I don't want to repeat all the words of gratitude we have for all the people who've organized this uh, meeting, but I would not like to I would not want to fail to repeat my thanks to the two young people who uh, bore testimony, Shannon and Roll, this morning. I think this was a very important um, Sean and Rahel, it's very important to have had them with us during this uh, event that's now finishing. So uh, this is the end of today, but I would uh, set a date for the General Day of Discussion 2012, which will be held probably on the last Friday of September, and which will be devoted to the rights of the child and migration situations, situations of migration. So put this in your diaries for next year, a year, all of you, please. Thank you very much for all your wonderful, uh, 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 well-informed uh, contributions. Thank you to all of you who contributed to the discussions. Thank you to the Secretariat, and obviously thanks to the members of the committee who actively participated in uh, uh, providing input uh, as research uh, background um, people. And then a last word there is a reception uh, to the right as you go out of the room, given uh, offered by our NGO friends. Uh, thank you very much, and have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs>